subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscribe button. Click the bell button and enjoy the latest uploads from our channel. Technology and welcome to the iPhone 8 Plus versus the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus full comparison. Now we just did the iPhone 10 versus the S9 Plus the other day. So if you wanna see that one, link is down below. And also this video is time coded, meaning you can go down in the description area of this video and find a section you wanna to go to if this video is too long for you. So with that being said, let's get rolling. All right, so the first section we're gonna begin with is the key specifications, the specifications that matter. There's a ton of them, we're not gonna explain them all, but the ones that matter is you get a 5.5 inch 1920 by 1080 retina display here for the iPhone 8 Plus, a 12 megapixel dual shooter on the rear, same one found on the iPhone 10, but you get portrait mode on the iPhone 10 on the front. Now you do have three gigabytes of RAM, Apple A11 Bionic chipset and a 2691 milliamp hour battery. This device also doesn't have a headphone jack, but you do get stereo speakers, and that's pretty much all you need to know. Also, I do wanna mention 202 grams on this device, so it's a heavy device. Keep that in mind as well if you are gonna be picking up an A+. Plus. Let's talk about the S9 Plus. Okay, so the specs that matter on the S9 Plus are gonna be that 6.2 inch OLED display. That's a 12 megapixel dual camera on the rear. Both cameras are optically stabilized. The single lens has a variable aperture, which allows it to let in more light. Also, these cameras are not equal. The, the, the primary shooter is actually sharper than the secondary shooter. So keep that in mind as well. Fingerprint scanner on the rear. Also, the 8 Plus has a 7 megapixel camera I forgot to mention on the front, but Samsung one-ups them there with an 8 megapixel front-facing shooter. You're also going to get the snap Snapdragon 845 with six gigabytes of RAM or the Exynos 9810 octa-core CPU built by Samsung, a 3,500 milliamp hour battery. So a sizable difference in the battery department over the eight plus, but we're gonna find out later if that doesn't mean it's a much better battery. Now let's keep in mind 189 grams here on the weight for the S9 plus. So it's definitely a lot lighter than the eight plus, but not, it's a little heavier than the S8 plus before it. All right, so I wanna discuss their design differences now. now the the A plus is the classic iPhone design. We don't have to go on too much about this, but that glass rear panel that they put on the A plus makes this phone feel definitely more premium than the versions before. And also what I like about the A plus's design is they have no branding down here, the FCC stuff down here, IMEI, things like that at the bottom. So it looks very clean at the bottom of this device, but overall it's basically an iPhone 7 Plus with a better glass rear back for wireless charging. This device is also a little bit wider than this Galaxy S9 Plus, but it's thinner. It's 7.5 millimeters versus 8.5 millimeters on the S9 Plus. So surprisingly, it's actually thinner even though it's heavier than the S9 Plus. The design features a functional practical home button at the bottom and a larger grill for stereo speakers on the front than prior edition iPhones. Overall though, if you've seen this on the street, you would be confused from the front at least, whether this is an iPhone 7 Plus, 6S Plus, or even a 6 Plus all the way from 2014. On the whole though, the iPhone 8 Plus, I think has a very conservative yet classy and professional look and design, I really do like it. All right, so discussing the Galaxy S9 Plus's design, we know it's an iteration of the Galaxy S8 Plus, which already was ahead, I think, of Apple when it comes to just pushing an innovative design on the front. Very thin bezels. Now, we know that the iPhone 10 has the notch and the almost all screen, but we're talking about the 8 Plus here. This phone is definitely ahead on the front panel over the 8 Plus when it comes to design. It just looks more premium. It looks more innovative. It looks more advanced, in my opinion. Now, on the rear, you also have a shinier blue as well as a shinier lilac. The black is pretty conservative. It doesn't shine too much. So you wanna get these two colors if you wanna shine, but the lilac is really the most standout this year. But I like the blue because I feel like the lilac's just a little bit feminine for me, but that's just me. You might not think so. USB-C at the bottom. Speaker grill is now a difference in design over prior Samsungs, and you have a speaker up at the top. If you look at it from this angle, it just looks so darn sexy, I think, from this angle. It's just like, it just spills over the edges. It's beautiful. So we're not gonna talk too much more, a little bit thicker than the iPhone 8 Plus on the design, but both of these I would definitely wanna have in a case. They're both fragile, they both can crack, they're both glass. So both of them are pretty great in design when it comes to just feeling premium, but the S9 Plus is ahead, I think, when it comes to just the looks, innovation, and just feeling more advanced in your hand. It feels like you get more for your money. And speaking about price, now it's logical to compare the iPhone 10 
to you the Galaxy S9 Plus because they're both, well, the most premium phones. And when you go into a store, that's what you're going to be looking at because they both look very high end. But the 8 Plus is actually closer in price to the S9 Plus and the iPhone 10. So if we go to the Apple Store, you can see that $949 for a 256 gig and $799 for a 64 gig. Now on the Samsung device, you can go on Amazon. I don't recommend getting an Apple device on Amazon. For some reason, they upcharge on Apple devices. You can see $839 for the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus in any color that you want. So only $40 more nets you the Galaxy S9 Plus, which is competitive with the iPhone 10. So just for price alone, I think the S9 Plus offers more for the money. It's more competitive with their $1,000 phone. Throw in a 128 gigabyte SD card from Samsung for about 50 bucks and you're still under the price of a 64 gig iPhone 10. Throw in a 256 gigabyte SD card for the Galaxy S9 Plus at around $115 from Samsung, you're still under the price of an iPhone 10, 256 gigabyte, and you're probably close to the price of a starting 64 gig iPhone 10 with tax. So for the money, more storage definitely, and closer to their more premium phone than their middle of the road phone here and the iPhone 8 Plus. Okay, so here's the juicy part, the displays between both of these devices. Now, there's a lot to talk about here because both of them are very different. So you have a liquid crystal display, AKA known as the LCD panel here on this device. Retina is the marketing for being over 326 pixels per inch. This one's a 1080p Retina and it comes in at 401 pixels per inch. Now on the Galaxy S9 Plus, you're looking at an OLED display, Super AMOLED 2K panel. And this thing is at over 500 pixels per inch, actually 529 to be exact. This is a 2960 by 1440p panel. So it's not quite a 4K display, but it's enough for a phone. It's actually more than enough. It's HDR10 compliant as well. I, I haven't seen many HDR contents on the iPhone 8 Plus. This one though gives you 3D touch where this one doesn't. So if you like that whole like right click kind of thing on your phone, you will like the iPhone 8 Plus. Now this one actually has a much larger screen to body ratio, 84 0.2% to 67.4, aka all that means is much more bezel on the iPhone 8 Plus. Now the Galaxy S9 Plus gives you a 3D touch home button, so keep that in mind. You don't have 3D touch across the board, but you do have it on the home button, which allows you to activate this device from the lock screen like so. But what are the quality differences? What do you get? So on iPhone 8 Plus, what you're going to get is very nicely accurate and balanced colors. You're going to get true tone display which adjusts to your ambient lighting condition to really make it easy on your eyes actually the iphone 8 plus is one of the easiest phones that i've ever used on my eyes probably even more so than the galaxy s9 plus it's just something about it it's just super accurate and my eyes just play well with it now that might be just a personal preference to me but it just looks very nice to the eye at night now one thing i don't like about the iphone 8 plus is blacks are kind of gray they don't really look too black so if you do anything with a black screen it's not super pitch black but for an lcd display this display is fantastic and it does do this whole rotation thing which the s9 plus also does now in this device so if we go into the home screen settings and we scroll down to the bottom and we turn on portrait mode only we're not going to do that now because we want to show you we turn on the auto rotate now you can also auto rotate your Galaxy S9 Plus. So they're pretty equal in that regard as well. This is something the 10 can't do. Now with the S9 Plus, what you get is a very saturated, very vibrant display, but it's also not oversaturated like it used to be on some of the older Samsungs. You can also go into display settings and go into your screen resolution and make it 1080, 720, or 2K. You cannot do that on any iPhone. Going into the screen mode, you have adaptive display, which is like the saturated color look. Then you have AMOLED Cinema, which I think gets closer to the look of True Tone. Then you have AMOLED Photo, which is very accurate for photo editing. And then you have Basic, which is very dull. So depending on your taste, you can customize it here on the Galaxy S9 Plus. This display curve also gives you an edge panel with customizations that you can put to your liking on the side. Now, one thing to mention about both these displays is that if you're watching videos, you actually watch it in the way it was meant to be seen on the iPhone 8 Plus in 16 by nine, just like you would watch it on a laptop. Now on the Galaxy S9 Plus, you're not looking at it in that way it was created on a laptop. You can stretch it and stuff like that. But when you watch on the S9 Plus, I think it looks more beautiful. Like it looks just more saturated, more enjoyable. So 
you have the benefit of watching the standard resolution the way it should be looking like on the iPhone 8 Plus, but you have the benefit of a more enjoyable, colorful experience with deeper blacks for a more immersive video watching experience on the Galaxy S9 Plus. And one last area where the iPhone 8 Plus just actually gets destroyed by the S9 Plus is sharpness of text. It's so much sharper on the Galaxy S9 Plus and I don't care what anybody says, you can see the difference between 1080p and 2K when you're actually looking at both of them and looking at these things daily. You will notice the difference. On the whole, these displays are both amazing and you're not gonna go wrong with either display, but I think if you go into a store and you look at both of these, nine out of 10 customers are gonna say that S9 has a beautiful display. It just looks better. So this is the display I would recommend if you're buying a phone solely for an amazing display. All right, so let's discuss software. So you know you're getting iOS 11 here for the 8 Plus. And iOS 11, while it's kind of buggy, it's not that buggy on the 8 Plus. It actually runs fantastic on the 8 plus so if there's any phone i could say that ios 11 runs great on this would be one of the first one i would recommend i've had no lag on this phone whatsoever now sometimes apps will do some weird things and uh, we'll have a few bugs on the 8 plus but other than that it's a stellar performing phone and it feels very smooth day to day it's just super liquid smooth i just wish apple would put 120 hertz display promotion on these iphones already i feel like they are in need of that i hope we see that later this year but on the Galaxy S9 Plus, when it comes to software, you're getting Android 8.0 with Samsung Experience version 9.0. And they really have fixed up some of the lag and twitches that I seen last year on my initial unit of the Galaxy S8 Plus. Oreo runs great on this device and they've optimized TouchWiz to run pretty close to the same as the iPhone 8 Plus. So using these on the day to day, I don't think most people would be able to tell a difference when it comes to overall speed, smoothness and things like that. But when it comes to software, I feel like they're both very advanced phones. However, the iPhone 8 Plus does a better job at hiding those advanced features. Now, the iPhone is actually much more advanced than you think, but you have to go into settings, dig around in accessibility and in some areas in general to really use these advanced features. So it does a good job at making it a good phone for everyone. Very simple. We know that about iPhone. Now, the Galaxy S9 Plus, on the other hand, doesn't hide any of that. It shows you right up front. I'm an advanced phone. Look at me. You know, Apple made a commercial about about the iPhone 8 Plus and 8 when they, you know, came on stage or they're watch this. <laughs> yeah, I can sing, don't judge me. But on the Galaxy S9 Plus, I feel like this is the phone that deserves that because this is the phone that looks at you and says, I'm an advanced phone. It says, watch this, watch what I can do. And it doesn't hide that fact. If you hold down the home screen settings are right here, look at all these settings. You open it up, you scan with your irises, the S9 lets you know I'm advanced and it doesn't hide any of that. This can be a little bit more difficult for users to use though. So I'm gonna put it like this. Software wise, if you want a simpler experience, it's still the iPhone. If you want a simple experience, but adds some complexity and some advanced features that you're ready to take on, you're open-minded to try, you're not afraid of these phones anymore. The Galaxy S9 Plus offers just enough more features over the iPhone 8 Plus to make it feel like a more advanced phone. Now, when it comes to their performance, they're actually not playing on quite the same level. The A11 Bionic in the iPhone 8 Plus is actually superior to the Snapdragon 845 when it comes to raw CPU performance. It's actually about a year ahead of the processing technology in this device. But the six gigs of RAM and the optimizations of Android 8.0 Oreo as well as Samsung 9.0 make that speed more felt, especially if you tweak the animations on the S9 Plus, it just feels so fast. Now, the iPhone 8 Plus in the same regard does feel fast, but there's slower animations on iPhone. You know, it just doesn't feel quite as quick on the day-to-day -day as the S8 Plus. Now, we can close everything out like this, but there's still no close all button. Close all button makes it very easy to close things. So what I'm trying to get at here is that in the real world, the Galaxy S9 Plus on the day-to-day -day feels faster. Now, I think overall though, the iPhone 8 Plus has a more smooth feel. You can only describe it by playing with both of them. It just feels a little smoother when you're scrolling sometimes. But speed, just speed alone, Galaxy S9 Plus. But one area I wanna mention, when I say speed, I'm talking about real world use, how people really use their phones. If you wanna get technical and you wanna get down to the 4K video editing, you wanna get down to the most premium, most demanding games you can do, I think that the iPhone 8 Plus is going to outdo the Galaxy S9 Plus. So if you're a extremely heavy user, both will be fine, 
but you're gonna get a little bit more power out of the 8 plus in that regard so is there anything special bro i get it blah 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 display lcd retina five. i know i know what the iphone is already is there anything i get special with this device right here yes you do you get 4K 60 recording on this iPhone. What that means is that you can get ultra high definition recording super smoothly, something you can only achieve in like super $2,000 cameras. So that's something you get that's special about the iPhone 8 Plus. It wasn't special before, but in 2018, the home button is becoming a dying breed with the capacitive key. This is special because it has capacitive customization, so you can change how the pressure level feels, and that's going to be a dying breed. So it's kind of special that you get that as well right there. And you get loud, very crispy dual speakers on the iPhone 8 Plus, which you also get on the Galaxy S9 Plus, but I think they're a little better here on 8 Plus, which I'll discuss later. Okay, man, I get it. The iPhone 8 Plus, but what about the S9 Plus? What's special about this phone? What are, Give me a few of the special things I get here. Okay, well, you get intelligence scan. When you start this device up, you are gonna have your face and your eye scanning at the same time on the S9 Plus. You also get a variable aperture camera, which we discussed earlier, which is basically going to open and close for different lighting situations, making it potentially the better option for photographers over the 8 Plus, depending on how much you're gonna use the pro mode and stuff. And you also get a super slow motion camera on the Galaxy S9 Plus, which I'm gonna show you an example right here of that camera. So super slow-mo gallery, Let's play it really quick. Slow it down. There it goes. Look at the CTA bus. It's going like two seconds. And boom, there it goes, flying right past me. So super slow motion, something you don't usually see on a phone and that looks pretty good at 720p not bad at all so that's it between these two when it comes to special features i think that the special features on the galaxy s9 plus are a little bit more than the iphone 8 plus so if you just want a phone that feels like you get all these features you're still going to be discovering months later get yourself the samsung you won't regret it speaking of special features i forgot to mention that with the samsung s9 plus you get the always on display which is customizable to your liking you can make it brighter or darker and you could set a schedule for it to come on and it will move around so it doesn't burn in on your device. So always on display is a nice function to have where you can always see the clock and notifications without ever touching the device in effect saving some battery life for the S9 Plus. Okay, so how do they perform in terms of battery life? Well, if you're deciding to buy one of these two, you really gotta think about standby time because that's where the iPhone 8 Plus is gonna win this battle when it comes to battery life. But in actual usage, I find that the S8 Plus lasts a little bit longer. So standby or actual usage, which one are you gonna be doing more of? You're gonna have your phone in your pocket more, get yourself the 8 Plus. Or are you gonna be using the phone a lot throughout the day more? Get yourself the Galaxy, it drains a little bit slower here. Now I will have actual results in the upcoming battery comparison, so stay tuned to the channel for that. My best time ever was about nine hours of usage on the 8 Plus, which was a mixture of standby and usage. And my best time, I'm gonna go by screen on time for the S9 Plus so far, has been about six hours of on-screen time. Okay, businessman, no, I'm kidding. Are you concerned about security? Do you really care about a secure device? Well, I think in this case, Get the Apple iPhone for encryption out of the box. Being updated all the time squashes bugs, security exploits, and things like that. Samsung, on the other hand, has secured by Knox, which is more of a hardware-based thing with Samsung Pay and you know applications on a device. Now, Samsung device is secure as well, but the Android ecosystem in general is still not as secure as iOS. Now, Google claims the other day on some news article, I read that, oh, well, we're just as secure as iOS. I don't buy it just yet your updates are way slower for the fragmentation of android meaning a bunch of devices that are not pixel devices so for pure personal information security i still think that the iphone 8 plus is better but it's not too much because you have secure folder you have iris scanning now you have the ability to use a fingerprint biometrics on this device and again secured by Knox, which will destroy anybody who's trying to hack into your samsung device so it's only slightly more secure i think on the iphone 8 plus all right when it comes to voice assistance on both you get siri on this device which i I don't like at all really and then you get the okay google here on the galaxy s9 plus but on the iphone you do have the google assistant which you can download so it's kind of a draw when it comes to the google assistant but on the galaxy you have more easier ways to get to it you can also just say it on any screen so i think assistant wise 
The Galaxy S9 Plus is the better assistant phone, but if you love Siri, you definitely want the iPhone. Bixby though, I'd turn that off if I was you. And the reason I say turn that off is because it's not as smart as Google Assistant and it's not as quick. It doesn't provide you with nearly as much information. So Bixby can serve more like a little feed for your phone, but in terms of the voice assistant part, I definitely prefer the OK Google. Now, one other thing I wanna mention is Apple Pay versus Samsung Pay. Now, when the terminal is supported at the store, Apple Pay and Samsung Pay work about the same. And uh, But when it comes to overall reliability, which phone you go out and you feel like, okay, I know I'm gonna be able to pay, that's Samsung Pay. It's really actually very secure with its MST technology as well. Um, it transmits like a little, it kind of replicates like a card reader. So like that little strip on the back of your credit card, it has a unique code. So every time you swipe it, it's different at every location. So, so it's an extremely secure payment system for the Samsung device. And so is the Apple Pay one, but you have to look at a list of stores to see where it's actually supported at. Funny enough though, even though you can pay for more places on the Samsung Pay, Apple Pay is actually used by more users. And that's probably simply because because Apple sells more devices. Okay, if you've been waiting for this one, camera. Let's talk about camera. Dual cameras on both, 12 megapixel. Man, these cameras are both so good, it's really hard to choose a winner. But I can tell you right now, when it comes to these two devices, you're picking accuracy versus super detailed sharpness, punchy photos on the Galaxy S9 Plus. That's the best way I can describe it. They're both feature loaded. The slow-mo is way cooler on the Galaxy S9 Plus because it goes in super slow-mo, something Sony did first. But um, who knows, Sony, they're not really doing too well. So uh, this is going to be new for a lot of people. And uh, hyperlapse is kind of like a time lapse. You got the AR emoji, which is trying to replicate Face ID doesn't do an amazing job, but it's something. You have live focus to focus and do bokeh. Over here on the iPhone 8 Plus, you have portrait modes, which stand out. I think the portrait modes are actually better on the iPhone 8 Plus, but the ability to change that bokeh is awesome for the S9 Plus. Now you have the Pro Mode, which you can actually change that aperture we were talking about earlier. And then you have panorama and food mode. So both of them are feature packed. I think Samsung throws a little bit more at you in the camera, but it also makes it easier to get to settings right by going into it in the camera settings itself. So you can see right there, boom, right from the camera UI. Now on the iPhone, you still have to go into settings, scroll down the camera, change some camera stuff. I mean, come on, Apple, like simple phone and then you make your camera complex like that. When it comes to the burst mode though, if you do do burst photos, I would recommend the iPhone. It's ridiculous how fast that thing bursts. And uh, I think if you're a videographer and you're looking for accuracy, you wanna edit in Final Cut or you wanna edit in iMovie, you wanna do some you know, tweaking to your photos, you might like the uh, iPhone 8 Plus a little bit better. Overall, if I had to pick one camera here, I'd pick the S9 Plus. I think the detailed shots just stand out a little bit more than the iPhone shots. That's not to say it's a bad camera, on the iPhone, it's fantastic. It's an amazing camera. It could replace a point and shoot as well. But the S9 is gonna be the wow factor camera. Camera you show people and they're like, wow, what a photo. A couple photo examples right here. You can see that the iPhone 8 Plus is a warmer photo. You got a cooler photo on the Galaxy S9 Plus, but you got probably a little bit more saturation over here on the right, but very close. You can see a little bit deeper blacks up here in the S8 box. So really, they're very close, but I still think that up close, you can zoom in much further on this device. You get just a little bit better detail and crispness on the Galaxy S9 Plus versus the iPhone 8 Plus. Now the 8 Plus won't actually let me zoom in that far, but both are amazing. I mean, these cameras are so close, you would actually have to like use them both for yourself to make your personal preference choice. Okay, so here's another photo. You can see on the A plus, a little bit more warm, very good detail. Over here on the S9 plus, a little cooler, but super sharp. You can just see the sharpness. Let me zoom in again here on the S9 plus. Zoom in just a little bit more. Look at the sharpness on that photo right there. That is ridiculous for a phone. Let's go over here and try to zoom in as far as we can on the 8 Plus. Really good sharpness as well. I see a little bit more grain though as we get near that camera. I will be comparing these in a detailed camera review soon, but you can see that the iPhone 8 Plus offers a little more accuracy where a little bit more crispness and detail, maybe a punch more saturation and coolness on the S9 Plus. All right guys, so let's talk about the front facing cameras. Like I said, eight megapixel on the S9 Plus and seven megapixel on the iPhone 8 Plus. Choose like this. You want a more detailed, realistic looking photo from the selfie, get the 8 Plus. You want a softer, maybe more pleasing if you don't want to see all your pores and all that stuff. 
you want the S9 Plus. You got skin modes and some cheesy features over here on the Galaxy S9 Plus that you might like. You also get wide selfie mode. You also get selfie focus, which is like a portrait on the front. So it does one up the 8 Plus there. But I think overall, the more pleasing photos to me, just because of their detail, is the 8 Plus. But I would want to, you know, edit them if, you know, it's showing a little bit too much. That's how you choose between these two on the front. Now, when it comes to video on the front, the front of the S9 actually shoots in 2K. So I would choose the S9 Plus for front video. All right, so let's discuss the audio difference on both. So you do have stereo speakers on both of these, but you do have the Dolby Atmos feature, which actually makes it a little bit louder on the S9 Plus, but is it louder than the 8 Plus? So we're gonna go ahead and play a video here, but you have no headphone jack on the 8 Plus, and you get that on the S9 Plus. So the S9 Plus definitely offers more when it comes to the audio, just because it gives you headphone jack, AKG headphones in the box, as well as Dolby Atmos and stereo speakers. Let's go ahead and play them. You can see they're both blasting my ears off. I don't know how you're hearing it. So we're gonna skip over to where I'm showing photo examples on this Note 8 comparison and kind of just see how loud they are. So we're gonna begin with the 8 Plus at the full volume, hit play. I don't know how well you're hearing that. Yeah, let's go. Do, 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 do. Okay, so that's the iPhone 8 Plus. So what I notice about the 8 Plus is it's very loud and clear. So even when it gets to its highest point, it still sounds very clear. Here we go with the S9 Plus. This is with Dolby Atmos on, by the way. Let's turn off Dolby Atmos for a minute. See how, how much less loud it got? Full volume. Dolby Atmos one more time. Jacks it up. But one thing I notice is with Dolby Atmos at the full volume, it gets a little bit tinny. It's not as clear sounding as the 8 Plus. So louder speaker with Dolby Atmos, get the S9 Plus. Clearer speaker and almost as loud as the S9 Plus, get the 8 Plus. I think overall the audio sounds better externally on the 8 Plus, but it's louder on the S9 Plus. But you always gotta remember, you get that headphone jack, which is a definite one up over the Apple device. Okay, so I wanna talk about phone call quality. They're equal. I haven't had issues with either, great reception, and both sounded very good in both earpieces and speaker phone quality. So this is a wash here. Totally equal, I think, when it comes to phone call quality, and both have loudspeakers for speaker phone calls. But I do like how you can swipe to the right to call people in the contact settings in the Samsung, but that's just a personal preference here. Overall, pick either, you're gonna be happy with the phone call quality. Let's also mention that you get IP67 water resistance on this device and IP68. So when it comes to you just going out in the rain, getting wet all around the Samsung Galaxy is the more practical phone here. So let's wrap it up. How do you decide which one to buy here? Now, a lot of people seen the S9 Plus, they said, are you kidding me? Look at that iPhone 8 Plus looking like 2014's iPhone 6 Plus. It's over from the start, but not quite. This phone, iPhone 8 Plus, actually has so much power in it, it's actually more powerful than the Galaxy S9 Plus. That's equal, if not sometimes, better battery life. It also offers a fingerprint scanner that is a little bit more accurate, easy to press over the S9 Plus. It's 4K 60 recording can go all the way, just can keep rolling, so it's better for videographers. And it offers a little bit more clearer speakers on the high end. Intelligent scan, you know, it has the iris scanners. It has Samsung Pay, which works in more locations. Curve display, 2K display. It does give you AKG headphones in the box. IP68 versus IP67. Fingerprint on the rear, dual optically stable cameras it is loaded to the gills it shows off it knows it's the stuff so i think that the samsung galaxy s9 plus offers more for the money here now i gave the iphone 10 the win over the s9 plus because that phone also has a lot of new features like this device and it has software updates but you know i know the iphone 8 plus will be updated longer than the